Hello and welcome to the Hellraiser blog. Today's Hellraiser blog, we're going to look at Tony Bellew and keys to victory for him in his fight against David Hay in the rematch. Obviously, they had the first fight. Uh, I had Hay winning four of the first four rounds. Um, the fifth round, Hay puts in a massive effort. He, he throws a lot more lever um, than he did in the previous rounds, even though he was the busier of the two fighters before anyway. Um, but in that fifth round, Hay starts to blow heavily. Uh, he starts making quite a lot of mistakes. And in the sixth round, he suffers this uh, ruptured tendon, Achilles tendon. So this is, this blog is going to be keys to victory for Tony Belly. So Tony Belly, for, for me, um, there's a number of strengths that he's got first. I mean, he, he was an ABA champion. Uh, he has had a seasoned career as a pro. Whether he's a natural heavy or not, um, I'm not sure. I mean, you think of him fighting like a Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. Um, I, I just couldn't, without being disrespectful to Tony, I couldn't see him competing with those guys. Um, they're just too big, I think. The, you know, the disadvantages that Belly would have against them would be too big. But Belly's a good fighter. Um, so what does Belly do to, to win again? against Hay because he, he lost the first four rounds against Hay last time the problem that I, I had really with Hay is that I thought it was unsustainable what the, the work rate that he had so how does Bellew make that happen again well if he engages exactly the same tactics again I think that puts a lot of pressure on Hay because Bre Hay will have thought about the first fight and has probably got a plan B this time last time he didn't seem to have a plan B he seemed um just keep doing more of the same and hope it comes good which it didn't but I think uh, with, with Bellew, we've got to see he's got to stand uh, at range for as long as he, he can, moving sideways, and use straight punches and not really engage too much with Hay because I think power-wise, I mean, even Bellew would admit that Hay is a bigger puncher. Um, he needs to use those straight shots. Tony Bellew uses straight shots. He's also very good at moving into favourable positions um, at close range and tying guys up when he's in trouble. And I think he's, that's got to be at the forefront of his mind the whole time. Even if he misses with a big shot, he can't come lunging in, throwing the... He, I think he, it makes sense for him to, to, to stay composed and stay with these straight punches. The one, one thing I would say, last time, even when Hay was quite visibly, you could see he was badly injured, um, Bellew seemed to be very hesitant to, 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 to jump on him. Um, even the rounds after Hay is injured, there's some rounds where Hay has an argument of winning the round. And I thought once Hay was, was injured, really that was time to step in. Not not to come in gung-ho or even open, but he could have stepped up a couple of gears more than what he did. Um, because against a guy like Hay, if, if you stand around, if you wait, it only takes one shot. Even though I wasn't impressed with Hay's punching which is quite a, a statement because <laughs> I've never been not impressed with Hayes punching. But in this fight, it, it just seemed like the, the timing wasn't there. And I think Bellew has to uh, capitalise on that. I think he has to use his jab, constantly use his jab. I would like him, second half of the fight, this time, to start pushing Hay back. Because I think, last time Hay was stopped because of an injury, I think... If Bellew pushes Hay back and puts pressure on him without charging, walking forwards in straight lines and walking onto anything big, he's, he's got to be very cute, he's got to keep moving his head and obviously tuck up. But I think if he can do that, um, he will force Hay to come towards him and Bellew can actually speed up the process of what happened in the first fight. The, why, why I say that? Because in the first fight he was so much defensive-minded and... If David Hayes throwing punches at you, he's a big, big puncher. Of course, you're going to be defensive minded. But I think if Bellew had maybe just uh, stepped into range a little bit earlier, he could have actually done damage to Hay rather than Hay damaging himself and stopping him that way. I think Bellew could have stopped him from his own punches. Um, so, what, what does um, Bellew need to do um, to, to, to ensure victory? I think he needs to be very tight defensively. And I think the first, if he boxes the first four rounds 
how he boxed in the last fight, the first four rounds. And Hay does the same thing, keeps biting, keeps charging. I mean, Hay looked like he was trying to bore his way in, overwhelm Bellew. Um, and that played into Bellew's hands because he could box very economically, very conservatively, just pecking with the jab and uh, s staying in the fight, even though he was probably losing the rounds, but forcing Hay to work at a pace which was outside of his, his comfort zone. Um, by doing that, he drew uh, the, the, the sting out of Hay, if you like. And the second half of the fight, I'd like to see Bellew this time using his right hand. He's got a very good right hand. But to throw it, he has to have confidence to set his feet. And I think he can not just slip the, sh the punch counter once and move out of range. I'd like to see him maybe dummy, uh, slip the, the punch coming from Hay, then throw two punches before he moves away or even three left right left hook or double jab right hand because Bellew has got a phenomenal right hand I remember him from the amateurs um, he was actually quite predictable in the amateurs I mean he used, to, he used to love left right and double jab right hand that was his favorite and he would do it throughout the fight sometimes I mean it's quite rare to see someone throw the same combination over and over again but he would that's what he would do and it worked for him because he's got that brilliant right hand. And the double jabs would sort of get the, the, the opponent's mind off the, the right hand. So try and block the jabs. And then this massive right hand would come across. And um, I, I think that's a, a weapon that he didn't use as much as I'd like to see him use in, in the, uh, the, the, the next fight. Um, so, yeah, because, I mean, after the injury especially, I mean, Hay was just there for the take. In fact, after round five... Before the injury, even Hay looks so vulnerable. He's there for the taking. He looks like you know he, he's Bellu can get him out of there. And um, I think if Bellu can pressure him, and I think psychologically for Hay, there there must be issues where even training wise, Hay probably can't train as hard as he'd like to because he's had so many injury problems that he's probably in the back of his mind somewhere. There's got to be something that's sort of saying, don't push it too much. Because if you push it too far, I could get injured again. If I push myself too much, I'll, I'll go 80%. And that obviously will impact then on his fitness. And I think that's an advantage for Bellu. And I think if Bellu puts the pressure on him early, I think we might see more mistakes from Hay being forced errors, if you like. And then uh, Bellu possibly come and uh, take advantage of those mistakes and, and, and really put it on Hay. And I think that will make for a much better fight if that happens. Because... Uh, I found it frustrating that even when Hay was clearly so debilitated, Bellew still <laughs> wasn't prepared to jump on him. Had the fight have gone on that extra round, maybe he would have for the last round, but I'd have I thought he could have got Hay out of there. You know, as soon as he's injured at world class, we want to see people do the job. And um I thought Bellew could have had him out of there. Um Look, I, I don't think that Hay's shot in the sense that his He's gone punchy or his, inf his reflexes have gone. But I have a big issue with Hay, just his physical body. I don't think Hay's body is made to carry a heavyweight boxer. I think it's too, too frail to carry. He's got a strong body, but I don't think it's meant for that weight. And I think, again, Hay can... He seems to punch his weight at heavyweight. His speed seems to have deteriorated. But I think... The, uh, also, the creativity seems to have not really been there. We, it seems to have deteriorated along with the, 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 the speed. But I think if we can see uh, Hay taken into deep water... Like I said, I don't think his shot is in his punchy or his punch resistance has gone like the classic description of being pun punchy in boxing. But I think... He's a, f a shadow of what he was. And I think if Bellew can work him hard in the first half of the fight, and like I say, I, I don't think Hay can train properly now. And I don't think he'll risk training as hard as he could because of those injury problems. Meaning that Bellew can work that. He, he can take him into the trenches knowing that... Uh, he. I mean, he, look, he seemed fitter last time, and I think he'll be fitter this time. Um, I mean, Hay's a very single-minded individual. He's someone that can really uh, sort of... Uh, grit it out and he did last time but I don't think uh, it's loaded in his favour if, if, if this happens in this fight. Anyway guys thank you for watching please give us a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed watching the video and uh, keep an eye out for my final blog on this fight which will be uh, 
the prediction. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.